Ray tracing. It's a piece of technology that can be used to enhance the visual fidelity of your games by adding realistic lighting, shadows, and reflections. Many modern games coming out today are implementing this tech, and we're even seeing developers remaster old games by updating them to include ray tracing. However, that added visual fidelity doesn't come without a cost and can be quite demanding on your hardware. What I wanted to know was if we're able to enable ray tracing on a fast GPU like the 4090 at 4K, would using a faster CPU help improve performance? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I had recently upgraded the CPU in my test bench and chose Intel's i7-13700KF. At 1080p and 1440p, the 13700KF was significantly ahead of the 5800X I was using previously and also showed some significant margins at 4K as well. This then prompted me into testing ray tracing performance as well. Now, when it comes to ray tracing performance, it's typically very GPU bound, but recent games have shown that a stronger CPU can also make a difference. Since I was upgrading my test bench and had decided to retest my RTX 4090, I decided I might as well go over some ray tracing benchmarks as well. Now I know there's going to be a lot of people out there who don't really care about ray tracing and that's fair. I personally choose to disable it when it comes to multiplayer titles where I'm prioritizing performance. However, for single player titles where I don't necessarily need a very high frame rate, I'm willing to sacrifice some performance if it means I can enjoy better visuals to create an immersive experience. Along with that, more and more games are coming out every month and are implementing this text so I think ray tracing is a feature that's a lot more relevant now as opposed to when it was when it was introduced to consumer graphics cards in 2018. So that was another big reason as to why I wanted to test ray tracing performance with a better CPU as well. Before we get into the gaming benchmarks, I wanted to go over the test system specs. Starting off with the AMD system, for our CPU, we've got the Ryzen 7 5800X, which I have overclocked and tuned using PBO2 and Curve Optimizer. It's paired with four 8GB sticks of Patriot Viper Steel, DDR4 memory for a total of 32GB, and I have it running at 3800 Mega Transfers CL14. The CPU cooler is an Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 AIO. The motherboard is an MSI X570 Unify. On the Intel side, we have the Core i7-13700KF, which has been tuned using turbo ratios. Basically, its all-core OC is at 5.4GHz, and the single-core boosts are at 5.8GHz. For the RAM, we've got 32GB of Patriot Viper Venom RGB DDR5, which I have running at 6400 Mega Transfers CL32. The motherboard is an MSI Z790 Carbon Wi-Fi. Both systems had their CPUs cooled by the Liquid Freezer 2 360 RGB CPU cooler, with the fans and pump running at 100%. For the game storage, we've got a 4TB Corsair MP600 LPX Gen 4 NVMe SSD. The the graphics card is an MSI RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio, and as for the power supply, we have an EVGA 1000G3. One thing I wanted to make clear is that I tested the games at 4K, and my reasoning for this is, as I explained in my last video, is that I'm trying to show a realistic scenario for this graphics card, as opposed to testing at low resolutions like 1080p, and say, hey, here's the difference because we're so CPU bound. Like, I don't even have to test the games at 1080p and get your results to show you that there will be a difference with ray tracing, because we're basically benchmarking CPUs at that point. What I'm trying to test here is at 4K, where we are typically GPU bottlenecked, can the CPUs start to play a more vital role? when we introduce ray tracing into the mix. With that said, let's take a look at our first game which is Control. This was a game that showed basically identical performance between both configurations using just native settings, and when I mean native, I'm referring to no ray tracing and no upscaling tech enabled. 115 FPS average is ample performance for a game like this, and that also gives us a good cushion. So when we enabled ray tracing, performance was still playable, but the main thing to note here is that both systems had very similar figures. When we enabled DLS, LSS and this game makes you choose the resolution as opposed to a preset. What I chose was 1440p and we can see performance is actually better than what we got with native settings which is great because it looked better and ran a bit smoother as well. Moving on and we have Cyberpunk 2077, a game which is known to be very demanding even when using native settings. At 4k we saw both configurations offer a decent experience though I would personally enable DLSS even with native settings to get the average FPS 
forecast closer to around 100 for this game. When we turn on ray tracing, we can see both systems had to endure the same drop and offered the exact same performance, so clearly it's very GPU bound, and using a faster CPU like the 13700KF really made no beneficial impact to the performance. When using DLSS, performance is close to what we got with native settings, with a slight edge on the Intel side, but it's really nothing to write home about. F1 2022 is a really interesting title because as you guys can see at 4K with ultra settings, both systems delivered blistering fast performance, with the 13700KF system averaging nearly 300 FPS. However, as soon as we turn on ray tracing performance, both systems suffer massive performance drops, and now they're about equal. I mean, it's still playable, but definitely wasn't as smooth as it was with native settings. Using DLSS does help bring up the performance to a smoother experience, but I was under the impression the Intel system would have been significantly ahead. Next up on our list is Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition. This game has one of the best ray tracing implementations I have ever seen, and it took getting an RTX 4090 to make it at least playable at 4K. Though what we wanted to see here was if the faster CPU would make a difference, and we can see when using ray tracing, performance is basically the same with this 13700KF, providing better stable 1% lows. With DLSS, performance is quite a bit better with both systems. Same 1% lows, but the 13700KF provides a 10% uplift when comparing average FPS. Far Cry 6 is a game that showed at native settings it performed better on the Intel system than it did on the AMD system. When we turn on ray tracing, which is just a light implementation of ray traced reflections because it's an AMD sponsor title, we do see a hit to performance, but I wouldn't really call it drastic and both systems were still offering a fairly smooth experience, though the average frame rate was 15% better on the 13700KF. Now this game doesn't support DLSS, however it does support AMD's FSR which can work on Nvidia GPUs. Using the quality preset, we can see that both systems do see a performance uplift, but the effect on the system using the 13700KF was more profound. We're seeing a difference of around 35% for the average FPS, and 33% for the 1% lows, and that's because we're probably running into a CPU bottleneck. This game can be quite CPU bound, especially at lower resolutions, and because FSR works similarly to DLSS, where it renders at a lower resolution, the CPU comes into play here. Since this game's ray tracing effects aren't as heavy on the GPU, the CPU has to do more work, hence the difference. The last game we'll take a look at is Hitman 3, and this title shows a similar behavior like what we saw with F1 2022, where at native settings we attained a really high average frame rate and there was a notable difference between both configurations. However, when enabling ray tracing and even when using DLSS, both systems offered the same performance. This game's ray tracing performance is kind of lackluster, if I'm to be honest. The difference when it comes to visual fidelity is subtle, so I'm not really sure as to why the performance hit is so drastic. For our 6 game average, please note that for the native settings it's actually an average of 5 games because Metro Exodus has ray tracing always enabled. But here we can see there's a difference of around 10% with the limited games that were tested. When it comes to ray tracing performance, both configurations offered the same level of performance, with the 13700KF offering slightly better performance, though that margin is negligible. Then, when we bring in upscaling into the mix, that margin grows back to 10%, since we're dealing with a lower resolution and the CPU starts to matter more here. So it seems like when we're dealing with ray tracing alone, it's still very much GPU bound, and having a faster CPU does very little, at least from the games that we tested. With DLSS and FSR upscaling, the CPU starts to matter more since your internal resolution is lower, which is important because as you guys saw, the performance drop from having ray tracing effects enabled is very heavy. So I feel like DLSS or FSR along with ray tracing go hand in hand at the moment. Even a fast GPU like the 4090 can struggle in titles with RTX on at 4K. Therefore, upscaling is basically a must at this point. The good thing is that DLSS implementations are really good. I generally tend to stick with the quality preset of DLSS, where I find visual fidelity is as good as native, if not better. Balance preset is still pretty decent as well, but if you have to go below that, I feel like it compromises the visuals too much, to the point where it's either not worth it, or you should look into lowering other settings. Nonetheless, I thought this would be an important video to make for you guys, considering how many ray traced games are coming out, and and what kind of a role the CPU would play once you have it paired with a faster GPU like the 4090. While not as vital at this time, I feel like with future generations, if we continue to get 50% plus performance increases and with different algorithms, this could very much be a different situation.
If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.